Hey guys, I just saw this article that just came out today on the Business Times saying that HDB flats can be turned into dual key homes. We have seen this a lot in condos. They have really built it as it is already. Um, now we are looking at some owners trying to convert it to HDB dual key homes, which is quite interesting, especially the bigger ones. But if you're talking about the smaller ones, maybe it's going to be a little bit more tricky. But let's take a look over this. In this article, I'm not going to be talking about, I'm not going to be going through sentence by sentence. I'm just look, looking at certain key points and try to weigh what are the truths behind it, how many, what are the things that a lot of people don't uh, take note of because it's more like in this case, is it more of this guy's trying to sell you the dream or is it really a practical thing? You, you need to take into consideration the kind of uh, concerns people will have about dual key. Today, if you're dual key, are you trying to sell to the investor? Are you trying to sell to a homeowner or a rather home buyer? And the kind of demographics is it that is your target audience? Is it really ideal for investment or not? <laughs> so let's take a look. If we are looking at, uh, in this article, they say studio can rent 1,008 to 2,005 per month. It really depends on a lot of other things because like location, condition of the flat. If you're talking about the one that they highlighted like this, you know, 2,005, I think it's a little bit difficult. Lah, oh. For HDB, eh? and then sometimes people pay a little bit more because it's condo. Ma. But if you're talking about HDB, there's no facilities. Unless your unit is going to be very nicely renovated, super good condition, why would people want to pay this amount? Because you need to think about it. A lot of people like to squeeze the hell out of tenants, but they forgot to think that hey, tenants are also humans. If you yourself is going to be the tenant next time and you want to rent a studio, will you be paying that amount of money? Or not? If, okay, maybe I may not be as willing to pay as high, but is it? What's the gap? If I'm personally willing to only pay thousand five, and I expect somebody to pay three thousand, cannot be right. And that is where you have a gap because it's like typical home seller. And when they become buyer, they become, oh, I want to sell expensive. Ah, wow, my worth, my house is worth a lot more. But when they end up being a buyers, ah, they will be, hey, why is why are houses so expensive? It's not fair, lah. It's blah blah blah. Everything is everything is overpriced, lah. The market is crazy, ah. So you see the sudden immediate shift. And there's a very big gap in terms of expectation. That's the typical ones. I'm not saying all. But unfortunately, there are more people like that than, than they, they would like to admit. So if you really want to get into this property for investment purposes, you have to be very clear-minded, very logical, and be very practical instead of just thinking emotionally and wanting it, everything as it is. <laughs> then let's take a look. If you are looking at a normal regular flat, 700 plus, 700 plus is on a low range, like it's like a very 301. 1200 plus, uh, I've seen higher already for a normal bedroom, uh, for nearer and near, very near to MRT, very good, nice, nice new condition. Possible, uh, very possible. But you also need to note the cost of renovating a house for a dual key, where only 1000, 10,000, 10,000, maybe some people renovate toilet only. La. Of course, it really depends on a lot of. Uh, other factors like condition, the kind of material that you use. Now this renovation is not that simple. La. They say, you know those typical renovation advertisements, very nice five room flat, super nice, everything looks so good, $50,000 only. How is it possible or not possible? La? Even my time last time during my first HDB, mine was a very simple design. A lot of people or my friends renovating a much smaller house than me already go up to 80000 last time. Mine was only $40,000 for a whole house and it's more than 100 100, 104 100, square meters, and that was already 40 plus thousand. Today, you want to do the same thing? I think it's easy, 60, 70,000 dollars. How is it going to be? Only this. <laughs> I think this is like a way, 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 way undercoated. La. So, you know, as it is. La, ho. Anyway, there are some implications that I feel we need to note. First thing is, will HDB end up clamping? Because in the first place, remember, HDB is meant for public occupation is meant for people the general population to stay in it's not meant as an investment tool as we know policy changes over months and over years will hdb suddenly turn around and say that actually we don't encourage this kind of dual key thing and you also know that with all the mop things here and there they don't really they don't like people to 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 use hdb as a rental thing because ultimately it's going to you see all you know, this you no. Know, if let's say the largest flats are all being converted into dual key, it's going to drive up the prices. And that is where HDB becomes concerned. 
because ultimately this remember a pdb is meant to be a public housing it's not meant for a speculative tool you need to align expectation with what is the actual product supposed to do because you also need to know about the government standpoint it's not so simple as what you want you also need to know what is the macro macro factor behind it what are the kind of things and when hdb comes down do you have to will they um, stop this kind of arrangement and even if you go hey it's going to be illegal thing it's like some people are going to close the master room uh, and then sell it and then rent the whole thing as an entire flat and that sort of things even though it's doing any mop some people do it but it doesn't mean that it's legal doesn't mean that it's allowed no it doesn't mean that and when they get caught you see all those people bto five years never even do renovation and the whole thing sell as it is empty and then gonna gonna take them back these are the things that we don't want to play and i seriously don't encourage you to do it because if government really send a message, don't we won't play lah. I don't think it's a nice thing to do. Just, most people like to game the system, but if you want to game the system, you don't game it too far. You game it too far, it's something is gonna happen eventually to you when when the re relevant authorities starts to get serious. So stay on the right side. I think uh wherever money is can be earned properly, decently, in the right way, you go and earn it. Don't go and earn it the un 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 not so nice way, lah. Huh? HDB flat owners may also have an overly optimistic view. This is very, very, very true. How many people are willing to pay that kind of price for that kind of size and for that kind of condition? <laughs> and if the price gap between the studio HDB is going to be quite small versus the, the studio condo, then what for I want to rent a HDB? <laughs> you, get, you get what I mean? There's a lot of comparison factors. <laughs> and then dual keys are generally less space efficient. That's because you also need to factor in or oh, there's going to be a uh, common foyer and also you need to factor in you need to build two kitchens eh? two kitchenettes eh? and all these are you're basically wasting space ma. right <laughs> that's why all this i think this is a good article to weigh all the pros and cons a lot of people like to say all this but eventually will hdb clamp and how will this affect the macro side and also your side is it actually a very space efficient thing these are in case you're wondering how they are actually doing it all these are some of the plans i'm not too particular about how they do it but they somehow can squeeze in whether they can actually get tenants to pay well and then you also need to know that when you rent out there's going to also, also going to be other concerns like managing the tenant what are the things the 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 landlord life is not as simple as it is huh? same goes for a tenant that's why i think it'll be best for both parties to be nice lah. i mean previously when i was renting my landlord was nice don't kind of jail whatever i need to do uh, and they also do um charge me unreasonably for my security deposit i don't get deducted anything because i also know that as from as a tenant i want to take care of the house even though i pay rent because a lot of people are very self entitled i pay rent so this house is mine it's for me to rent the house no it shouldn't be that way and then you get you, you will end up getting ready to pay for what you've done lah. but if you're a tenant you take care of other people's house in good faith then eventually hopefully trust the landlord is a nice person they will come back to you and then um they don't charge you for anything lah. right i think that was my experience so i would say uh sometimes you know <laughs> the law, law of attractions like if you are even a nice person then usually the the whatever happens to you is nice la. of course not everything but usually you'll be like that i'm thankful because i've seen quite some cases or you know gonna the security deposit gonna deduct here and there but sometimes it's not the landlord's fault it's really the tenant like that but sometimes it's really not the tenant's fault but the landlord choose to be like that but sometimes hang sui long but i mean just believe in being a nice guy try to take care of to the best of our abilities and i think hope for the for, hope for the best lah huh? and to go into this one this one is a little bit more uh straightforward i think this that one is a three room this one is a four room a typical layout how this one originally can convert like this original maybe you can get let's say you rent out one bedroom okay higher let's say you give higher the thousand two hundred thousand two hundred thousand five hundred so this is maybe about three thousand nine but if you let's say you go and do a renovation here and there you see you got two kitchen and then you got a common foyer and then here and there blah 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 oh uh, this one looks like a very big toilet anyway uh, this one looks like a very big toilet but if let's say this one this one i highly don't think it's gonna get 2005 like maybe this one higher chance like 2005 or maybe even 3000 whichever it is 1008 plus 2, 3, 000, 2005 4, 000, 3. 4, 000, 3, the minus this one you have a additional cash flow of 400 dollars which is not too shabby but if you look at the grand scheme of things and you take into account to renovate 
it into this and then you have to renovate basically the whole house mark can't be you only renovate this one and then re do renovate this one what is the overall cost is it gonna be a lot higher is it gonna be 50 50 60 thousand dollars if it's sixty thousand dollars and then you get a positive cash flow is only 400 how many months are you going to rent in order to cover this 15 times 10 which is 150 months just to cover it then what's the point of it yeah i, I hope you get what i mean huh? whereas this one is more of like a straight rental okay you okay hopefully if the house is not shabby la. if the house is not shabby then i think you can get out at this price even if you cannot get out at this price later we will work uh, work it out okay even if you can get only 1000 you minus 400 400 uh 200 200 400 then one will be about three thousand five three thousand five four thousand three minus three thousand five is a six eight hundred dollars thousand eight hundred dollars cash flow per month which equates to nine thousand six hundred dollars per year and then you times it by five years, are forty plus thousand dollars, and then you get a house that is like a little bit too customized for dual key. You are trying to sell to an emotional home buyer, then he's like, "See me side, what is this? <laughs> what is this house like? This why is a house like me? Is that why you have two separate compartment? And then most likely they will have to hack this thing if they want to convert it back to the same house. Will they be willing to offer higher price or no? But you are managing basically two different tenants, and then it's not so straightforward as it is random causes like I'm, uh, what like what i mentioned whereas this one is more, can be more like a straightforward rental as long as the unique condition is fine so at the end of the day if you factor in let's say a difference of 300 dollars per month to one thousand dollars as much as the difference of between the dual key and the non-dual key hgdb it, it's a difference of 3006 to 12,000 per year which is quite a lot of money i'm not saying it's a little money but thousand dollars a year if you think about it it's not a lot it's not very little but times it by maybe how long five years is like a difference of a 15 to how much eighteen thousand now this is eighteen thousand this eighteen thousand to a sixty thousand eighteen thousand sixty thousand and then less before taxes and then also your rental causes and then if you factor in if you sell your house the right way if you package your house the right way will the difference be just about sixty thousand. I think. I think we can. We can. If you strategize it and sell it in the right manner, fifty thousand is not a very difficult thing to do. Uh, provided you really maintain your house in the right way. Recently, I sold one hundred k over the last transacted only less than half a year ago. Higher floor. The condition was well maintained, and then it was easy to sell. One first one view sell already. But then, if imagine that if the owner converted it to a dual key, I can guarantee you there's no way we can hit that kind of price. So why would you want to go through all the trouble just to do this? You see, you see what I mean. That's why this is my face when I see this kind of people. When I see people doing all this one dual key, this kind of thing. Come on, guys, think about a bigger picture. Don't think about the. In this case, it's not a small amount of money, but in the grand scheme of things, it is a small amount of money. Why would you want to focus on this? Why not just focus on trying to enhance your property value through the typical traditional method and then make it and package it in, in a much nicer manner? Or rather, in the first place, pick the right property and then important, most important, most important thing is, is to time it, time your exit properly that one is the most important because anyone can buy anyone can buy whatever however much it is but if you don't get it the right way you don't exit it at the right time it's gonna make a hell of a lot of difference a lot of people don't think don't 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 know and especially they are blindsided when they become seller because oh my house is the best my house is like the most the most valuable everyone likes to think that but is it really the truth in the buyer's eyes or no? you need to think from always think from the buyer's point of view that's what a lot of people feel to do so hopefully this helps in terms of if you are thinking whether to convert your house into a dual key uh hdb i think it's a little bit it's not a very good idea to me no matter how i see it anyway this one is the other news that i saw uh like what i mentioned previously the all these are fear mongering news la. i mean i mean no not a property boo but come on guys think about it if you know the market you know the market yes things are slowing down also partially because developers are also not launching yet if let's say the next two next now is the ghost man they ask, that's why they are not launching if let's say after that they go and launch uh let's say example trump park then the news it really depends on which month they actually launch because we don't know whether they will shift the months or not they can give us the preview day aga this is going to be estimated but they will still shift it if something happened 
if let's say nothing happen and then the year the year or year the month kind of difference compare uh, that that maybe that month don't have launch then suddenly that, that this month got launch compared to last year i think naturally it's going to be <laughs> like oh the, the next news will be um uh, increased by 60 percent year on year also oh, that's why you need to deep dive and know what is going on rather than just reading the news as it is do you just read the news as it is you are I don't think puberty is the right thing for you to do la, or, <laughs> in terms of investment. That's why when we see, I see this kind of article, a lot of people will feel scared. They may forward the message to me, but I'm, I'm perfectly calm because I know what exactly is going on. And once you know it, you know it. And it becomes much more easier to make a logical decision. Especially that's why my clients, they, they trust me on this. They know, hey, Titi, what, is, what do you think about this news? I'm, then we share opinion. La, and then we, we, we chat about it. They talk about it. And that's why they know what is actually happening so that that's why they don't panic as much i think these are the type of value that i bring to my client that's why they they are they are more savvy investors in terms of these like more like a hand-in-hand -hand relationship then we grow together right don't don't be so blinded by market news and then focusing on things like this because we are looking at the way bigger things and the bigger things are the one that actually make you more money give you much more stability in your life Alright, that will be all we have for today. And if you need any help, feel free to DM. And that's it for today. See you guys. Bye-bye.